Yo no morirá. Me dije Moana. Shivana. Representing Faruga. Oh my God, I have so many beautiful, not so many, there are like six beautiful labakwas in the studio, looking so amazing. <laughs> and some of them are first guests, first attendants. Abalala, bakao kada. Muli mutia. Welcome, welcome to Women's March. I call it Women's March because our wellness journal for March says... It is Women's March, a time for us to make money because this month is about financial wellness. So I'm hoping we downloading the card because we're almost getting done with March. So we hope you've saved that kamani in your boxy, and you're actually trying your financial discipline and also getting your investments and trying to save some kamani before the year ends, right? And today, today, today we are back and we've missed you. We hope you you hope we hope you are listening and you don't stop listening. So today we are talking about AI and I have expertise. Yeah? Mm-hmm. They're going to introduce themselves. My name is Sweet Chocolate and in the studio with me I have Tatiana. Um, I'm very happy to be here. Chikawa. <laughs> Excited to talk about AI. Bana, um the job <laughs> uh, I work with Lifeline Youth Empowerment Center. Lifeline works with GBQ young men. Uh, but I'm a tech enthusiast. I love AI. I love nice stuff, gadgets. Yeah. So if you want to buy me a gadget after this, eh, car inbox. Please, yes. Mm-hmm. Hey. <laughs> Riza from her internet. AI is a topic that we are really passionate about, personally and professionally. So I'm so happy to be part of this conversation. Mm. And you're very welcome. This is almost the first time we've had a, L, a gay person she on the show. Yeah. yeah. Representing for the men. <laughs> <laughs> you're very welcome to Bakuya Togere. And we are just going to kick start the conversation because we are queer together she say what she say yes we are always saying what we want to say and today we are talking about ai what is ai what is application what is the limitation do we need ai what is the background all of that today just digging so ai is is basically assistive technology or assistive tools um Ideally, if you would wa- you would have wanted a human to help you do something, the, uh, uh, an AI is trained to try to do something for you like a human. So basically to assist you or to replicate what a human can do. So this could be photos, this could be work, this could be typing, this could be texting, all these things. But um, that's basically, it's, it's a machine that is taught to try and behave like a human. So it's a machine. Ah. In addition, I uh, would like to say that also AI is a bunch of different things. Mm-hmm. It's machine learning, mm-hmm. uh, like the previous speaker said, where how where uh, uh, machines are told to do what they do. So, for example, you would teach a tractor to dig maybe a field of an acre mm-hmm. alone. Like you just input the controls, and that's that's what it does. So it will do only that. That's machine learning. Uh, like how we are teaching robots how to, you know, for example, Alexa or Siri, mm-hmm. how to, you know, make your music playlist, how to switch off the lights. How, that, that's machine learning. Mm-hmm. It could also, it also includes data sets, like um, data is collected from everything. Everything is data. Your name is data. Your likeness is data. What you do is data. Mm-hmm. Where you stay, is, everything is data, literally. Uh, so data s- these data sets are actually what um, enable machine learning, you know. And then AI also includes algorithms on social media, especially algorithms uh, control the content that we consume on social media platforms and other online platforms. Algorithms are the um, drivers of what the social media that we know now. Yeah. For me, I think it's an amazing time to be alive, right? Mm. That's one mm. to see this this happen. And this has been there. It's just that it has just been released to the general public. People have been testing on this. People have been doing AI and trying to come up with this for, for a long time. 
and we don't know what that would mean for us Africans mm. though yeah we, we were not there we are not there but how can we then because it's here so we we, we have got to know how can we live with AI in our own perspectives and you know have it within our day-to-day -day life because right now honestly speaking I don't think you can go to a site mm that does not have an AI tool there to help you. Mm. It does not matter meanwhile. Whether you're trying to for to code, <laughs> it will be there for you. Mm. Whether you're trying to learn, as I'm taking a class somewhere and I saw AI assisting teacher. I was like, Whoa. wow, thank you. Mm. Thank you, mm. you're amazing. That, yeah. Mm. But of course it was not yet available in our country limitations there but it is interesting it's literally impossible even when you do not know you're going to interact with AI but are we ready mm -hmm. can we use it mm. some people worry that releasing AI to the general public that does not well know how to operate it is problematic and mm. all those things are going to be covered today mm. and we hear about that mm. Sandra Sandra mentioned something that is really interesting mm. um, that um, Algorithms, especially on social media, when when you when you see, earlier we are having a conversation, when you so when you see a sound, <laughs> an, an algorithm. So social media companies, mm. when we use um, an app or a social media site for a while, yes. they learn our behavior depending on the time you spend on a post, how often you like a post. Uh, which pages interest you a lot so they when once they learn that behavior then they try to tailor the content that you see on your platform based on what that behavior that they have learned so for example if you like a lot a certain show i like the office yeah uh, mm -hmm. the office is an interesting show um so I, I like watching clips of the office and so you watch it once in the morning maybe in the afternoon you see another clip by evening, um, when you go back to TikTok, <laughs> every two, three videos are about <laughs> the office, yeah? Because the algorithm has now learned, yeah? And it is always learning because interests change, uh, trends change, so it is always learning. It's always learning and always wanting to know. Uh, not just TikTok, all platforms, including Google, Google Search, including even our voice assistant itself, yeah? If it has learned that you always ask for food, yeah the first <laughs> suggestion is nice restaurants in kampala <laughs> yeah so yeah it, it's it's uh the machine lands and and it creates it's it la like sandra said it it is from a data set yeah it creates a data set from which it can learn to your behavior and then it replicates it and then you can you enjoy twitter with everything yeah, without useless things because you know? there are sometimes you're like kakati why am i seeing balams yeah? Mm -hmm. appointment mm -hmm. am i supposed to be interested in this yeah mm -hmm. so <laughs> the less time you spend on a post the less they will show it to you mm -hmm. again mm -hmm. yeah in addition um even on I, i've noticed this on on iphones especially i don't know about um android phones but with iphones the the phone will learn your pattern of how of what you do for example when you wake up in the morning what do you do first? Do you check WhatsApp first? Do you check Twitter first? Do you call someone first? And usually they will suggest for you like in the notifications, but when you wake up, they'll say, oh, call, the, call, you know, like call this person because usually it's the first thing you do when you wake up or check Twitter because usually it's the first thing you do when you wake up or like when you're going to bed, you know? Mm -hmm. So AI and machine learning data sets algorithms are all interconnected mm -hmm. they are not like a separate entity mm -hmm. machine la data sets feed into machine learning algorithms are fed by data sets which also feeds into machine learning like it's a whole bunch of things which is why um for example people say oh my phone is listening to me but your phone is not listening to you you get it's because certain apps like whatsapp have access to your microphone 
Mm. So every time you say shoes, if you say shoes a lot, <laughs> be guaranteed in your next Instagram um, uh, yes. session, mm -hmm. you're going to be getting um, adverts for shoes oh. or accounts oh, that post things around shoes. So it's all interconnected. It's not they are not separate things. They are all interconnected. Data sets are always being collected and they feed into machine learning, mm. feed into algorithms, mm. and so on. Yes, uh, and and for me that worries me because then uh, where do we have the right to protect our kind of data and what we would want to share. I feel like it has taken away the power of consenting mm. to to the data we want to share to whether I really want this to listen to me now or later. It's kind of, you know, people always ask things like, so why are you worried? If, it's, if you're saying it, maybe it should be out there, but it, it's actually very painful when something is out there that even if it's not a secret, by the way, if you talk about mm. shoes, it's not a secret. But it feels bad that someone heard me talking about my shoes when the conversation wasn't meant for them. Mm. So for me, my the issue is like, then how do we protect our mm. information and what is heard, what is listened to? How can we stop this? Mm. Because I've got to know that I have some sort of control on what goes forward. And then also what she mentioned about um, these machines always listening. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I was having a conversation the other day with a colleague. I'm like, oh, by the way, and this, I didn't speak. I typed. <laughs> I did type. <laughs> Would you want a scholarship in this particular Country. university? Mm -hmm. In the evening, they received <laughs> an email. You guys, they received an email. The person. Hello, so and so. Your application is waiting. Please go forward and continue. And that was very creepy. I was like, this is crazy. This is scary. Please don't tell me. Did you type? Please tell me you typed something. You said something to these people uh -huh. because it's worrying. If I had spoken, maybe. But I didn't speak. It was secret typing in office. Yeah. Mm. So for me, uh, about uh, the, the AI learning, our behaviors, mm. I one time removed health fitness. Mm -hmm. I felt like it was striking my movements. <laughs> I felt like <laughs> it was, me. yeah, it's striking me. Eh? Mm. So I removed it and I also removed Siri because mm. I was like, oh my God, I feel like my privacy has been bleached. Yeah, yeah. Yes, mm. because I am moving. They tell me they are moved for over 300 kilometers and you're like, Meaning it can now know where I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Then th that's how we go back to that bit of where they said cars should have trackers, what, what. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm fearing, like I don't know what, where mm -hmm. we are going. Mm -hmm. Your car parking there and then the whole, they are looking at where your car is parking, what are you doing, I know. So it's a bit scary. So, so we, uh, on the health app, eh? so I just bought my Pixel and I had not put in like the credentials and everything. Mm. So it started tracking my sleeping patterns for about a week. Then um, one day I get a notification, you are likely to be pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> and then it gave me a list of information. Oh These are your sleep patterns. Right. You you are tired <laughs> like this. <You're laughs> so uh, it's helpful, but it's not always accurate. Mm. And also companies pay a huge sum of money to sell this data. Like like um, Shikawa said, um, the companies, uh, like now the university, it probably pays Google, yeah, mm. to to listen into this data, to get this data, because um, Google will just provide you the data. Oh, these are the number of people, or oh, this is the kind of person who would be interested in your university, yeah? Um, Apple pays huge chunks of data, yeah? So when you see those pop-up ads, they are not just pop-up ads. Instagram has paid Google, eh? or a company, or that shoe company that you've seen has paid google or instagram to listen in to advertise to you mm -hmm. because then you are the most likely to buy from them yeah so it is it is very capitalistic of like while they are still invading your privacy they are making money off of it and that leaves me wondering mm. so do we wh what is the trade-off are we trading off our consent to use these devices like what is like what is that thing opportunity cost where you see okay so what is the trade-off do i have to just accept 
because there's a point when for me i actually just went off i, I didn't have a phone for like six months i was done mm. i was done with this shit. Mm. no yeah it was terrible like i was done <laughs> right so i'm um, like <laughs> and i feel for me it stays to the point that we do not have the enough inf- we don't have the information mm. we are not even given the time to learn the awareness about this it's very limited you've got to actually be interested to to know a lot of these things so if you're not interested i'm just going to go pick up her phone and you know if it, so if if i kind of become a person of interest there's so much out there on me that the people who want to affect me can get this information so how can we for me how can we navigate this new era that some of most of us i won't lie mm-hmm have not been prepared for we woke up and that was life mm-hmm. yeah it's designed that way big tech designs the system that way mm-hmm. that things happen without our apparent knowledge mm-hmm. but they have a loophole where they can say you consented yeah every time you download an app from the play store mm-hmm. you agree to the terms and conditions mm-hmm. and for us we, we rarely mm-hmm. i don't think even 1% of the population reads through <laughs> the entire terms and conditions mm. so for them they and will say no we gave you our terms and conditions mm. and you agreed mm. remember you can't use that particular service without mm. agreeing to the terms and conditions mm. so big tech is designed in such a way that there is a lot of vagueness around how they operate but that you need their services mm. to 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 be able to navigate the current world that we are in the digital era you know mm. so in that sense for them they they are they they can say ah guys for us we laid down our terms and conditions you mm-hmm. agreed you downloaded our app you used our service and that's it I think, so we I have think, nothing I to think do for what you can and do is to go back to the old age of using <laughs> the what <laughs> the katochi <laughs> because your katochi is your google assistant again <laughs> more <laughs> right and and also i think we have because this the, this what she was asking the, what is the what, what are they what is the trade off the trade off is making your life easy yeah ease of use eh? you want to be there you just look and the phone opens yeah you want to be there you put your finger it opens yeah do you remember a day where you had to press 14 buttons to open your phone yeah So like all these things are with trade off and the trade off the, the tech companies are saying yeah. that we want to make your life so easy. Yeah. We want you to know that you've missed your period. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. You don't have to go to the clinic yeah. when am I pregnant or not? No. Yeah. Just put the app it tracks your period. Yeah. So why it's tracking your period it's taking your data but you don't mind because you know that it will tell me and it will be accurate yeah, yeah that yeah. yeah yeah so i think i think that is a trade off the trade off is ease of life mm. but if you don't want it munange you can get the techno one which didn't have assistant yeah <laughs> <laughs> when you talked about uh, period tracking apps i remembered um the point on so these apps we get them for primary function yeah. for example a period tracking app its primary function is to track your period mm-hmm. but remember it also collects a lot of information that is not connected to your period mm-hmm. yes your sleep what? patterns from from the app you give it you give it permission your name where you stay what device you're using your sleep patterns if you're having sex or not is it protected sex or not because you feed yeah you feed that information in Mm-hmm. because it it does different mm-hmm. functions apart mm-hmm. from just tracking your period mm-hmm. so when you feed that information in you might feed in also like your symptoms of you know like uh, your symptoms wow. pre mm-hmm. pre periods mm-hmm. post period so like that information is not just used for the primary function mm-hmm. of the app it's mm-hmm. used for other things and like bana mentioned it's sold to third parties that use it for marketing for whatever mm-hmm. there's a there's a case of a lady who was using a particular period tracking app and then she got pregnant um then she informed she the sold, app actually. no yeah, she, so i think yeah <laughs> yeah i think it was somebody you're talking about uh-huh. she got pregnant she informed the app that now you know what guys i'm pregnant mm. you know and it, and you give her this this information very willingly mm. no one puts a gun to your head and says 
tell us if you you know uh, uh, you very willingly I'm give it up because yeah. also because convenience you don't want to go to the doctor and then they ask you did you last have your period and you're like ha huh. Oh, but it was over in which month? I remember as if it was over oh, which month. You just open the app, you said, this is the date, and that's it. So she got pregnant. Um, unfortunately, she lost the baby um, midway the journey. And like, like human nature is, we rarely announce bad news. You deal with the bad news on your own or privately. So she didn't inform the app that this is what happened so the app you know sold her data to a third party and in her social media feeds she would always get adverts for For baby baby clothes baby what baby what and then when the uh the the due date arrived the app told her congratulations (laughs) is it a baby boy a baby girl you know so the emotional distress she faced yes but um the app i think is the same that you're talking about Mm. she sued them obviously uh, but the app you like told her, man, we didn't know. We're using know. the information. We're using us. the information you gave us, mm-hmm. and based on the information you gave us, by this time we we're supposed to have given birth, and we we're just inquiring if it's a baby boy or a baby girl, and then we we're just sending you nice products for your baby, and then you know. So at the end of the day, the trade-off is us. Mm-hmm. We are the trade-off. Our our information, our likeness, our data is all used for different things. Mm-hmm. So even if facebook or instagram its primary function is to be social it's to be a social networking uh, site mm-hmm. yeah. there is so much that they collect about us that is just beyond social networking mm-hmm. so even as we utilize these platforms it's something that we need to have at the back of our minds yeah. uh, speaking of um you mentioned someone mentioned something about digital uh, revolution are we in in a digital revolution and if we are how can we use this ai to our advantage what age where like how how can we use it to our advantage okay uh for me i think i i think it can like banner said make life so much easier <laughs> you no longer need to pay an editor you could use as many editing tools as they are as you can as your money can afford you mm-hmm. so if you don't want to pay of course uh you can use the free ones. They also make free <laughs> free ones that collect even more more data, like okay. Sandra said. So so you can literally it can make a lot of lives and a lot of things very easy, and you can also now sit and develop your own what you need, what you would, you feel like. I wish there's an AI that uh, did this. Told reminded every person I invited for the podcast the time without mm. me having to stress at exactly this time mm. you can do it because now it's there mm. and the data is there mm. and some of this data is actually free most data used to train these ai tools at least in the beginning mm. the data sets are already set the beauty is that it actually takes a lot of data it takes structured and unstructured <laughs> means if you put your photo it will also analyze it it does not care and take what it needs to do what it wants to do. So for me, I feel education it can make it easier. Editing easier. You can now. We've even become artists. Some of us mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. to make our own. Eh, mm-hmm. peop- I don't know. They they will still be present, but now some of us make our own art. So yeah. Have you ever like personally like really like get uh, used it like for a gig or for, and then the results were okay for you? Uh, I. I no, no, no. I'm, I'm not any different from Bana. I'm a, I love, actually for me, I think I've taken a class, I've, I've done everything with AI. I've looked at tools and even gotten overwhelmed, the mm-hmm. tools that are there. I've tried to create my own and then mm-hmm. failed very greatly, <laughs> but I'm still on that journey because I also feel there's a lot they need. Yeah, I have. Yeah. I have used them a lot mm-hmm. to code, to, to do art, to edit my work. Um, a lot. Yes. And our organizations allow this, right? Not okay, here's the thing. <laughs> so um, we were in a donor meeting yeah. and uh, the donor was complaining. All your proposals have chat GPT. Okay. There's even at the end that it says, please, this is not a definitive <laughs> answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but um, yesterday we were in a meeting with uh, uh, we were in a session with the team at Farug, mm-hmm. and I said something very controversial but very true. AI is not for stupid people. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and it's supposed to make your work easy rather than do all your work for you yeah it's supposed to make your work efficient why if i don't know about how to write a cv why do i why should i use i mean the cv is going to come out weird and ai generated if i don't know the basic structure of a cv yeah but if i know the basic structure of a cv when uh, the ai produ- chat gpt produces for me a cv i can be like mm, not me mm, not me mm, not me so yeah chat GP- Ch- oh chat gpt chat gpt is a uh, a text generation tool mm-hmm. so it just spits out text yeah you instruct it uh, using a prompt they call them prompts mm-hmm. you instruct it using your voice or you you type and you say hi i want to do this and this and this and this and, this. and then it replies okay here it is in any language am i over only it's only english, english yeah but of course there is an ai that translates whatever it has given you to luganda nowadays um i do graphics design nowadays uh, i d- when i do a lot of posters we have now the luganda section so i d- i do the poster and i just tell the ai translate this poster give it to me in luganda i don't even have to go back and check whether it has translated well i just post and people I, I should Yes, I think you should, but I mean posters usually have one or two lines. Mm. So it's not yeah, it's not complicated or a paragraph. But um back to the the point Riza was saying and the other team members, it should be I mean don't fire your finance because you think you have an AI, yeah? Mm. Equip or support your finance person or support the person handling your books to be able to do them faster or do them better using AI right so i think AI is not here to replace us AI is here to make our work better to enhance our skill sets and everything yeah enhancing skill sets I remember a time when when we had to go to like for organizations especially when we had to go to like that one graphics designer in town eh? mm. who would make <laughs> the posters for you mm. like who would you know you'd have to pay uh, mm. money for the service but also like your time yeah. your transport your you know are uh, telling them what exactly you want because for you you know exactly how you want to visualize that how you're visualizing how the poster should turn out yeah. but you have to translate your visualization in your mind mm. to the person who is doing the actual work mm. these days i scroll <laughs> through twitter i see everyone every organization almost uses canva yeah. as a design tool mm. right mm. and that is the canva has put the power of designing in our individual hands like mm. you don't have to have that banner mm-hmm. and go to pat- particularly to go to banner yeah. to design for your poster in yeah. fact it's not even for organizations only even though i'm still the whole of organizations <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you know <laughs> and, gra- and <laughs> graphics design, graphics design. <laughs> and it's not even just about the like organizations eh? yeah. like you can just design like a really really nice art piece yeah go to town print it out frame it put it up in, in your, your house, house. Your house. Yeah. like you don't even need to pay exorbitant fees for art yeah. so ai is is making life efficient but it won't replace the human touch because at the end of the day your skills it's said. yeah it's yeah. your skill set but also like your mind everyone's mind works differently everyone's mind visualizes differently so mm. at the end of the day there is that unique ability that human beings have to bring a human touch to whatever it is so ai is definitely just enhancing uh in banners words our already our abilities our skills so that's so that starving mm. artists can relax eh? their jobs won't be taken away starving artists starving, starving, starving artist painter hey. should learn to incorporate ai in because the message is mm. the starving artist should learn mm. because now the other starving artists will have a competitive advantage Mm. over you 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 starving artists you will spend more time on an art piece mm. you will spend more time thinking of ideas you will spend more time on all of everything and the other starving artists with ai will still use their skill design faster not get as tired mm. and be able to deliver work more work in the same amount of time we see how um what is it called hand handmade art i don't mm-hmm. know the yeah. word to describe and but like handmade things yeah. are more expensive yeah. because it's 
like it's like fine china it's mm. handmade mm. so it's very expensive because it's handmade mm. as opposed to being industrial and mechanically made mm. so i guess the conversation can't just boil down to ai mm. and what ai can do it's a holistic conversation on capitalism on society and socialism yeah. mm. like van van gogh's art or uh, michelangelo's art or picasso's art can't be compared to ai they are all equally important they are all very nice but they are def- definitely different so van gogh's piece will go for millions of dollars your ai generated poster might 20k like a, a couple light 20k polite 50k maybe but at the same time it's all equally important because there is someone who can afford that 20k and there is someone who can afford a million dollars also you have used your brain to try to j- try and generate that yeah mm. so there is a level of skill required to imagine yeah. that i want uh, to design chikawa in van gogh style mm-hmm. mm. so the thought that you thought that you wanted the person in van gogh style it means there is a, a level of thinking, a level of skill, a level of creativity that has gone into it. Mm. It's just not as much as the other person who has invested in painting mm. and what, yeah. yeah. So do you think Picasso's um, art can be can be uh, replicated, replicated with AI? Yes. 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 Ah. It's it it can be. So uh, for me I feel like uh, after that my follow colleagues have explained mm. like um, it's available because regardless someone has given you some post to 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 post out there but then you have some corrections to do and then you're like ah, if i send back this post and then it comes back like will that person reply to me very fast so if you you get the chance of inputting this into chat gpt or any other app or site and then you get yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, but also, eh, I, I think what I also okay. want to 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 kind of hmm. uh, say something around what Bana said. There, the app. I think I also agree. I think I do not think AI is for really dumb people. It isn't. I think not. I don't want to use dumb, but if you do not have some sort of skill mm. in a particular mm. field an interest? there are things you will not do mm. uh for me i would take an example i um, i'm there very hardly trying to code my things so that i win some money because there are there's there are competitions so of, of using no you design, <laughs> you do you do a code yes, and yeah. if everything is working fine and it's it's it, it's 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 amazing and people think it's amazing you can win like fifteen thousand dollars i'd be looking at the prize money and hoping one day i win so i go in ch- i go no no it wasn't chat gpt so it, uh, it's a coding thing so it produces the code for you and and i put this code in my in my not my presentation in my vs my vs gone that vs thing and it brings me lines, right? So many lines. And I'm trying to read. I'm trying to say what is wrong with this thing. It's not running. <laughs> it's not working well. So they are telling me it has an error, but I couldn't tell what the error wow. was because I didn't have that skill. Mm. Cut the sh- long story short. I'm back to reading and trying to analyze oh. what each thing mm. means so that mm. I come back and now do it well. Mm-hmm. So clearly, if you don't have the knowledge, the knowledge yes. you can't. Some things you will not. Mm. Honest. Don't feel bad, but... Just learn and come, be easier. And when you said about things, be, in Uganda, nobody's buying, no, f- even 200, 200, 200,000. Mm. For an, an art piece, you've got to be good. Yeah. You've, it has to be you've big. got to be good. It has to be big. It's too much. So if you want to make money, take advantage. Do your yeah. things, print them so many put them you see those uh-huh, go to nasa then distribute them everyone who work in a supermarket see your nice looking thing pay their 30k mm-hmm. you would have made money you would be happier yeah, you'll be able to survive on the streets, eh? okay yeah. let me correct you with that i think mm-hmm. you're wrong because one let me say this one it depends on the age group mm-hmm. people that have money know what, what they, they want, want. The quality of what so they it want. does not matter how much even when you tell because partly I am an interior designer. 
But there is one time we went to this guy's apartment and he wanted art pieces for his house. And I was so amazed that he could just, and not, not go to people that are making the art, but go to supermarkets buying because he, he has like three floors and each floor has about 10. So you can just imagine that is about mm, 30 pieces. I thought in my head, I thought we are going to go and pick art pieces for maybe 30k because the guy was picking art pieces of 600k. 600 guys this is something you saw on the internet it's giving printed out eh? <laughs> printed out put in a supermarket and someone is coming to a supermarket to buy it in my head i'm like god what the hell no. exactly so i think because because we're in a certain group of people at this age we think people can't afford people can actually everything that you see out there people can actually afford for creatives you're the one who sets your price right uh, and that's what she's trying to say like if if you hmm, sorry if you are um if you are an artist and I, I do this with because i teach graphics design i do this so many times with graphics designers oh sorry so um i, I do this so a lot with my students of graphics design so um it, when canva had just come on the market as a tool for, to help people do graphic design most people who knew photoshop who knew adobe i know adobe i know photoshop were like they they, they were making jokes they are like ah that is yeah you design something in canva right now let me tell you i can i teach my students exclusively canva yeah and I'll tell them that if you want to use Photoshop well and good, if you want to use Adobe well and good, but there is a way the algorithm makes work so easy and you can replicate something that someone has already designed elsewhere in Canva and high quality and everything and someone cannot tell that you used Canva. They might think you used Photoshop. And people, people are used to difficulty. They think difficulty is quality, yeah? They think if you spend a lot of time on an art piece, if you spend a lot of time doing something, then it's quality. And yet, I would spend a shorter, produce the same thing, spend a shorter amount of time, and still charge you the same. <laughs> the time won't matter, eh? Exactly. Because you're not there when I'm... Yeah, <laughs> yeah Tony, you when I'm yeah? making it, yeah? For creatives, eh? I think everyone needs... To set their price according to what they think their product is worth. I mean, you can print it out NASA and put it there, and you say it's six hundred thousand. And if someone really likes it, they'll buy it because you are the one who has set the price. Yeah. I'm going to go to sex work only fans. Yeah. There are only fans pages that are forty dollars, a hundred dollars, and there are those which are five dollars. Yeah. And there are those of Otunonakobutunos. Yeah, but you have set your price. You know what you're doing. If you're selling, <laughs> you know what you have. Yes. Exactly. So I think you just have, with or without AI, if you're creative, set your price because you are the one who knows what your value or what your worth is. Yeah. But it's the same thing. People don't really, usually we don't, when you're not as interested in the thing, mm -hmm. you don't usually think about what the person who is buying is gaining out of it. Mm -hmm. So maybe this person who was buying an art piece at 600000 each was, like in their mind, they ha they were justifying mm -hmm. why they need to buy only art pieces at that, at that price, uh, that mm -hmm. kind of money. I remember when Elon Musk was uh, tabling purchasing X mm -hmm. from Twitter, Twitter by then. By then. Mm -hmm. People were asking, why, why is Elon Musk buying Twitter? You know, because he's in like space things and stuff. He's in electric vehicles, driverless vehicles. Why, why does he want a social media platform? Mm. Not knowing that social, the social media platform is going to give him, first of all, data, access to data, what people want from mm. his products, from space, from the cars, from what, but also data that you can sell to other companies and make money off it. Then uh, people are not also factoring in the fact that he will be able to control information mm. using his platform. Mm. Like he can control what we see, he can control 
whose accounts get blocked. I remember mm. the controversial thing of him wanting to bring back Donald Trump's account that has mm. been that had been closed, sus- off. Uh, closed off, actually yeah, not even just suspended, but clo- entirely deactivated. Mm. You know, but that's because he's able to like he can. So for him, when he was buying X, mm. he was like, ah, uh, uh, I don't just want the the, the usual social networking. There's other things that he was targeting. So similar analogy goes for yeah. creatives and their products. Yeah. I, I want to, to think about um, the AI music that has been created mm. and that is making rounds. Okay. Our laws in Uganda are shitty. Yeah. So we, we can't even start thinking of how to regulate AI music here. Mm. Because we have not been able to regulate the basic copyright of like real music by real humans, we can't even regulate it. <laughs> now, music created by machines, how where are we going to start? But I think, um, like I, to- I said, that it's a good thing because you can mix beats, mix voices, mix harmonies, mix, yeah. And create something new out of AI. I, in my in my first AI class, I was teaching people how to create beats and create, like I told them, uh, from like mixing beats and everything. Mm-hmm. When they created those beats, um, I asked them, "Do you think you've had this sound before that you've created?" Mm-hmm. And they told me it sounds vaguely familiar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the reason I'm saying is that is because, let me tell you. With music, uh, the same with fic- pictures and colors and designs, mm-hmm. there is always an element or elements in the design mm-hmm. that have been used elsewhere mm-hmm. or someone has used them yeah, before. Definitely. But it is your creativity to bring three or four or five different elements mm-hmm. from different places mm-hmm. to be able to create something new and unique. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nowadays, all the music, I mean, apart from hymns, which are in the church book in the 80s. Um, nowadays, every new music is not actually new. Mm-hmm. People are sampling, people are doing, yeah? yeah so yeah. AI is technically doing sampling, if you realize it. Mm-hmm. Yeah? It's, uh, it, is, it is sampling music, yeah? Just that now it has a bigger database mm-hmm. to what? To sample, to sample from, person. yeah? Mm-hmm. And also it's more accurate, maybe on the voices and everything. Mm-hmm. So the laws me i personally feel like the laws that of ai and ai music generation should apply should be the same as the laws of how someone would sample music yeah if you're, if i'm sampling Mickey, Nicki minaj's voice on a song of wilson bugembe <laughs> right <laughs> yeah i'm saying Nicki minaj sing for me wa- walumbe zaya yeah. and she said yeah well, sure, sure, walumbe zaya <laughs> yeah both Nicki Minaj and the Walumbe Zaya should be able to benefit. Mm-hmm. The right of Walumbe Zaya and Nicki Minaj should be able to benefit mm. because one, they're using her voice, mm. but also the person who wrote the song and the tune has to benefit. But we are not yet ready for that conversation here in Uganda, unfortunately. But um, in the US, uh, there, is the, there was even a writer's strike recently mm. over AI and they, they sort of set out some standards on is people who do film production yeah uh the writers. the writers the the Script producers and, the and even the actors themselves yeah they were like you ai is invading our space how do we protect our creativity rights mm-hmm. and yeah they came to an agreement that if you're using this the same copyright laws yeah okay. apply but unfortunately here in uganda even the copyright laws that are here can't protect me who sang a song and then some weird person comes and puts a chip beat or Ben Suna comes and puts dingididi, dingididi, and but like that's creativity. it's creativity but if he has not created someone, if I'm not benefiting from my music from yeah my from my idea mm. then I don't think it's it's fair as an artist or as a creative, a creative yeah. and for the first time actually i was in a government meeting a conference somewhere and then someone one of one of one of our government or ministers said something that i actually loved because i didn't think they would actually talk about it but one of the things they said is that it is so saddening that in africa we just use what everyone uses like first we are happy about everything that is happening 
but we forget that the white men that make this for us benefit from it. You, you're happy to use AI because it simplifies your life. It does. Just know that every day they're thinking about something new to simplify your life. What they take away from you is your originality. You don't have any originality about anything. Because the only thing you have to do is sit, use what they gave you, and life goes on. They benefit. Some of you will benefit because you're doing your work easily and this. But if all things came to an end, like when we woke up one day and uh, Facebook was closed, mm -hmm. mm. what was the next thing that right now people use? Mm. TikTok, no, it's VPN. Ah. Who gets a lot from VPN? The ones that you understand? Like, we need to understand that however much we are using this and it simplifies our lives, mm. you need to have a back plan. Mm. That's why most of the things that mm. uh, China does not just allow things in its country. Like you just don't say you'll use this. No, it won't use. But anyway, all in all, we need AI where we are. You like it or not, that's the generation that we're in. Mm. You like it or not. But at the same thing, let us also be efficient enough to use what we have. Mm. Me, that's what... like. I would love AI, and I love it. I don't have a problem with it because I'm also a tech person. But I always tell people, you're the same person. You're the same people using the same thing. That's why we have the same things running on social media. Mm. Like there is no originality anymore. <laughs> because you think you're using this for the first time. When you upload it, that's when they bring you, so and so has used it, so and so has used it. You're like, oh, okay. Mm. You understand? Like, there is no originality whereby the other time you used to stand and say, this is my work. I'm very sure no one has it. These days, you just know everyone has it. I mean. No, no, just write up a thing. Exactly. That's, that's why we need to have a bigger conversation beyond just AI specifically. Mm. AI exists in a system of capitalism. It exists in a system of colonial, colonialism. Uh, yeah, colonialism. That's the word, yeah? Yes. Okay, yeah, my English visited mm. today. Uh, it exists in a system of, so like everything you're talking about around taking away our originality, taking mm. away our identities or taking on our identities it's all that that's the kind of conversation we should be having beyond just specific ai tools or ai specifically because if you realize um there's a while back mm. not even a while back recently i ca just can't remember when uh there's a lady who did a ted talk where she was um doing a research on particular ai tools of facial recognition mm. and she said in her research uh, facial recognition tools which also enable unlocking of our phones with face ID, uh, operating our internet banking apps with face ID, oh, no. driverless cars and, and them recognizing human beings and stuff. All like that technology drives all those things and more that we are not even aware of. Mm. Facial technology um, technology wasn't responding to black people, like black faces. It would not recognize black faces because the developers <laughs> of that technology are white and they are going to, to feed the data that they understand, that they want to feed it. Uh, that's why also uh, there's an incident of a driverless car. Uh, I think they were testing the driverless cars. They knocked black people. So for them, they recognize human beings as white people. So as a black person, your identity is being invalidated and erased. So the whole, my whole point is, we can't have these conversations on AI while only specifically talking about AI. Mm. We need to have more holistic conversations around the kind of systems within which this AI is operating. Mm. Um, I, a few years back, whenever on Google, when mm. you would search Google, um, an angry person or an angry woman, they would bring the face black of a black person, person, of a black yeah. woman because of the stereotype that black women are always angry, mm -hmm. black women are always quarreling, black women are always, you get that stereotype. Um, when you would search for transgender people, they would bring up um, images of women who are big boned, like women who are, who are big, big women, mm -hmm. not fat, mm -hmm. women who are big and tall and, you know, mm -hmm. women like Michelle Obama, women like Harriet Tubman, mm. women like, like pe women who are, 
you know cuz the stereotype is that as a woman you're supposed to be petite and feminine and mm. all so fragile and what but that's not how every woman is built you get mm. so the people who are creating these technologies and who are developing these technologies mm. have their own biases and have their own stereotypes that they mm. that they feed into which is why your point actually stands on they are taking away our originality they are erasing our <coughs> identities they are invalidating our identities because for them that's what they know that's why they're going to feed it because it is their technology the ones who have developed it they're going to develop it for people who look like them not for people who look like us you get um there's also <laughs> there's also an example of google when people would um google monkeys Monkey. black people faces mm-hmm. would show up <laughs> because we know because of colonialism and racism why people call us monkeys, monkeys. So for them, as the tool that is being developed, it recognizes that people who look a partic- in a particular color are actually monkeys. You get? Oh yeah, so we, ca- we can't, I, I would encourage us that even as we think about AI, even as we think about the whole digital interface, we can't just have these conversations in a vacuum. Mm. They exist in systems that are reinforcing yes. particular stereotypes. Mm. I think we were so, talking about the diversity. That's yeah, why you just, you see that. today when people fight for diversity yeah. online. Because for me, for me even before the AI, I used to, to struggle. You know everyone wants you to put, is it called, what is it called? That pronounce. miss, not pronounced, ah. that miss, that cast, prefix. That, those oh, were prefix. Were, were prefix were, mm-hmm. The other day someone said that very funny word. So, those things, there are only two things. You be a miss, a mister, misses, those things. And you find that, and this is, and actually, believe you me, this is the data that will, will be used to train yeah. that yeah. machine. And when this is the data is used to, that is used to train these machines, what do you expect? They, can't re- they, they will never be able to represent someone who is ambiguous and doesn't fit that data set. Some, you see, sometimes that, that conversation I was telling you about the AI tool that was put online and it was so mean, mm-hmm. and people were saying this tool was trained to be mean. Mm. Me, I always tell people when it comes to AI specifically, the other data that is actually programmed, you know, there's that rigid data where you say A plus B, then it will give you an output. Mm. The problem with AI is just it bases on data mm. input, right? Mm. So for me, I tell people if you're so mean, mm-hmm. the tools are going to be mean. Mm. So it is as simple as that. Mm. If you're AI, AI represents, for me, I, I, thought, mm. I told people sometimes that I think it is even time for us to reflect. Yeah, on, <laughs> on who we are as human beings because this is our data and this is what we put out there. Mm. And and for me, I'm s- I, I like inclusivity online. I like that when I'm registering, please ask, ask me, am I gender non-conforming? Am I this? Am I this? So that when you see my pictures, let it be a picture that represents a gender non-conforming mm. person. Mm. But if you insist on male, female, male, female, and then we are fighting these systems outside here, but it's never captured online, we end up with biases like that mm. and those biases so yeah for me for me it's all about i think we the systems that uh riza is saying are very important mm. to look at when you're looking at these tools and mm. and i and i hope that for some of us who fight for representation yeah. carry this representation yeah. online and demand that this representation is there mm. let me have a choice not to represent myself that way but give me a chance to because I don't know where you're going to put my data. And as well, if you put it out there, at least represent me right. Yeah. That, that will give a little bit of peace for me. And, and le- lastly, I have registered where they called me, where they allowed me to use a different... So the, yeah, no. and I used MX, like the Max for gender and conforming people. It was so amazing. And when they sent me emails, they're like, Max Chikawa. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, at so least someone out there thing. has that information. It's, it's important. So for me, my last word is, if we want, uh, like Chikawa said, if we want to be represented in this data, in these tools, let us learn how to use the tools. Um, I want every LGBTQ person, mm. at least if you're working in, if you're an activist, if you're working for LGBT rights, whether it's Uganda or regional or international, I want you to be able to learn how to use these tools. Mm. 
because the more you use them the more you train them and the more you can do activism on them because then you ask you you speak on what you know mm. yeah you speak on okay now you see this particular tool yeah google bad or um google assistant or um chat gpt is biased towards this because you have used it and you can prove it yeah so if you don't know how to use it you you are yeah you are living in a bubble of in ignorance yeah so let's learn how to use these tools let's be open to using them yeah for our work and i believe a lot of our work is uh, and um Riza will share this a lot of our work in the past and in the previous years has been very paper focused mm-hmm. yeah to call a new paper we, you hire six staff to do paper mm-hmm. things on paper mm-hmm. yeah yeah and while that has been well and good the digital age is changing yeah mm-hmm. why how why why shouldn't organizations embrace the digital age mm-hmm. why are we still writing reports on papers mm-hmm. why are we doing our finances on, i mean the money comes in the bank so it is a virtual why don't we do all our transactions online mm-hmm. yeah why let's let's embrace online let's embrace digital yeah and move away from that old way of working because then also it's it makes us be more creative it makes our work more faster also we need to rest mm-hmm. yeah so if you spend less time at office less time doing work it means you can be able to rest and be well and i and i know that farug is big on wellness yeah. so let's ensure that um when we move our work digitally it means that we don't have to move a lot we don't have to think a lot yeah. we don't have to spend as much time working but mm-hmm. still the results are there mm-hmm. and then we can have enough time to rest thank you yeah. um so as we as we wrap up almost mm-hmm. i would like to just say that high internet is releasing a research on um how social media algorithms impact LGBTQ organizing, community building, but also our individual lives um, based on, you know, how we utilize the internet and how we use social media platforms. Some of us here have been um, uh, respondents in that research. And so uh, just look forward to, I think, before Easter weekend or shortly after Easter weekend is when we shall release the report. So it will be very interesting if you could just grab a copy. I know we are going paperless. Uh, you can find it on our website <laughs> when it is ready mm-hmm. and just kind of read how people around the country have experienced mm-hmm. social media algorithms uh, because also just to build on to what Bana said, we can only advocate for inclusion and diversity if we know, if we are coming from a point of knowledge. But if we don't know, then it's very hard to argue and make the argument stick in the room. But also for some of us who are working on activism and organizing around tech, you're in spaces with big tech like Meta. You're in spaces with uh, policymakers in the in the EU, in America, who are able to create change about these things. It's important that we actually put our voices there, so that at least there is diversity in the room when these products are being made, or there is diversity in the room when they are being assessed. Uh, but it all starts from us knowing. Like we need to seek that knowledge and know how to use technology and these tools to be able to make that argument. Thank you. And also adopt, adapting to the new digital age mm-hmm. because people fear losing their jobs. But then we go back to Bana, what he said mm-hmm. that if you have a finance, they should then adapt to mm-hmm. using AI mm-hmm. or a communications or anybody that is in an organization. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, so I'll start with generative AI. Yeah. So generative AI basically means. Um, you tell it to do something and it generates something new for you yeah so it can generate photos so for photos there is a tool called midjourney midjourney creates beautiful images yeah mid m i d then journey j o u r n e y yeah midjourney um then another another one which we tried with the farouk team is called lexica L E X I C A. Uh, that is a free tool. Midjourney is uh, for pay. Lexica is free. So Lexica is free for you to try out and see. You know, we call it Yeah. 
So that's photo generation. Uh, there are thousands of apps online um, for photo generation. There is Imagine and then there is Remix. Those are the two that I can recommend. So you go to your Play Store, look for Imagine. Imagine is uh, black with a purple circle. Uh, remix is just the word Remix with a black background. So that's image generation. Text generation and day-to-day -day tasks. There are three tools. One, ChatGPT. We all know ChatGPT. Um, uh, nowadays, Bud is called Gemini. So Bud is like the ChatGPT, but for Google. So you go to Gemini, you type Gemini, and then uh, it will yeah, be there. Also, Gemini, when you install it, if you have an Android phone, it now works as your assistant. And you go food the cool generating for your answers for your exam yeah then um the third tool um uh for a text generation i i like we use it a lot organizations and people who like writing essays and stuff quillbot q u i double l b o t uh summarizes your work um corrects your spellings uh translates, yeah, uh, also changes the tone of your message, yeah. Chika was saying earlier that some people write rudely, yeah. So how do you sweeten your words so they make sure that someone, when they listen, they're like, yeah, yeah. So, so those are the text generation tools. Now, um, assistive AI, uh, assistive AI, we all have it on our phones. We have... Um, we have the two main ones. We have Siri and Google Assistant. Google Assistant is moving away from Google Assistant. It's now becoming Gemini. Um, so uh, for some people, it's going to be moving. Eh? But for us who have taken of 2016, Sigara and Assistant War. Kakati, the other tools uh, for assistance, assistance, um, hmm, I'm trying to remember it. Um, there is uh, this tool. Mm, I keep forgetting its name. Okay, okay. Let me let me go to the general apps. Yeah. So if you have a smartwatch, if you have um, uh, there's Google Health Connect. Yeah. Basically, what it does is uh, it gets your health data. Yeah. You can set appointments. Yeah, for your doctor, and it reminds you. You can um, do so many things health-wise, yeah? You can set targets. If you have gym targets, first one, two, yeah? wellness, you could do that is, that is, that is it. Um, it has an Apple counterpart. I think it's Apple Health. Yeah, so those, those are two for health. Now for sound, for sound, uh, there is Adobe Podcast. I think it's called Adobe Podcast or adobe and there's also adobe sound yeah so for you who like doing podcasts or who like to kukwananga to wait to to aga ulira background noise eh? yeah. you want to send your baby some nice message na yenga temuli background noise try adobe podcast and adobe sound yeah they edit your sound singers yeah you want your voice to be clean without going to studio adobe sound I think I'm done with the tools for today. Yeah. Thank you. Man, that is that that was very informative. Thank you so much, Bana. Um, you've all been amazing. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. So just don't forget to uh, visit our webs our social media on Instagram, fa underscore Uganda, uh, Facebook, fa Freedom and Rome Uganda, on Twitter, Farouk underscore Uganda, on Anchor Podcast, Faru fa underscore Uganda, then TikTok, fa underscore Uganda. Please, we've been back. We are together. She said what she said. I've got a question. Why?